Go ahead, John. Welcome, everybody, uh, to tonight's show, Hidden Gems. Um, we have some amazing Hidden Gems tonight. I am John Henry, co-founder of Hidden Gem of Both Sides of the Conversation, and I have with me... I'm Rico Hamilton, co-founder of Both Sides of the Conversation. And today we got an amazing show for you tonight. We got some hard, heavy hitters uh, coming about our community that's doing some amazing work on multiple levels. Um, it's just truly a blessing and an honor just to, you know, for me to highlight black people and to uh, uplift black faces, uplift, uplift black voices. Um, this is what our young people need. This is what our community need is learning how to highlight each other, how to um, support each other and how to be there for each other. So we got a, a, a amazing lineup for, for everyone out there who's watching. Some of you might know some of these folks and you know that they already been doing the work, but we definitely want to highlight them um, today and honor every life that they that they saved, every life that they've supported, every young person that they've uplifted, um, every parent that they probably supported, every mouth that they feed it. So we here and we just want to support them and we got their back. John, can you just tell us uh, a little bit of, of uh, about um, both sides of the conversation um, in terms of the platform? Yeah, so both sides of the conversation, um, what we're about is uh, bringing the community together. We're about healing. We're about coming up with solutions, dealing with all of the issues that we deal with in the black and brown community. Um, this platform is made to help uh, promote our, our, our people that's in our communities doing work, um, having that communication, because we believe that through communication, there's a healing process that takes place. And we need it in, 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 in this COVID time. We're using this platform to help bring people together highlight, lift up, build, unite, come up with solutions to make our community better. All right, so I guess we can go directly into our first hidden gem. John is gonna introduce this person and he's gonna, he gonna, he gonna, he gonna, uh, he gonna knock this one out the park. <laughs> so tonight we have uh, Shante Bluford. She's a mother of two children and a grandmother of three. She received Jesus Christ as her savior in 1999. Since then, she has seen God growing and developing her as a woman through, her, through his word and influence, and influence other people and resources. He placed, placed in her life along the way. In 2016, she began facilitating small groups through her church. She uh, loved, had the love for encouraging others, led, led her to send out daily devotionals to people through her email list. Um, as people approached her, saying how did, how she was how they were inspired with her transparency, transparency, she gathered all the materials, and God gave her a desire to write a devotional book. Um, that desire continued. She still facil facilitate groups at the greater capacity. She also want to write more books that cause individuals to do to do more to know their identity. She can operate in freedom and purpose for her living living in her driven pro purpose. So with no further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Shante Bluford. Thank you. Hi, everyone. And first, I want to say thank you guys for having me. Um, it's, I don't know, this has kind of been a journey and it's really unexpected. So, <laughs> and I'm not comfortable talking about myself. But like you said, um, my whole, I guess, point of, being here is I, I did my, I wrote a book on called Be Encouraged If I Made It Through, So Can You. The book is a, a devotional um, and it helped me to get through some rough patches in my life and to kind of figure out some things about myself. And I realized that it's something that a lot of people need, especially women we we go about our lives we become parents we become we start becoming things that but then we don't know how and we lose ourselves in our titles and situations and so i decided to write a write a book about it that helped me to get through some like i said rough times yeah, so um, John, he was, um, you know, when, when he 
um, was telling me um, about, you know, because we, we do nominations for our Hidden Gem segment and, you know, we make sure that we, like, we want to get people who are actually on the ground and who's actually doing a lot of the work. Most people who are on the ground, they do the majority of the work um, as it relates to um, people to people contact. Um, there is people in higher places that do um, that big work also, but it's, it's just a little bit different. Um, and he was telling me the story and, 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 and kind of giving me more context of, of uh, about you and um, the journey, I mean, even reading your bio and, and the journey, it just for me and, and how I seen it was, it sounded like a, a, a stories that I've heard before, right? And, and the similarities on how, you know, we go through certain life experiences and through those experiences, there is a way to make it back to the fold. Um, and what and what's so good about you coming on, me and John just had a segment uh, with our Sunday chat around um, healing in the black community. And we were talking to the black churches and we're trying to figure out how do we bring young people and how do we bring people back home, right? And regardless of whatever religion you are, how do we bring people back to spirituality? And I think that you are a testament of, of that in, in, in being able to uh, get deeply rooted back into the foundation of oneself. Um, and we commend you for that because I know that your story, your book, I can only imagine the amount of people that is actually helping. Um, I know you probably hear this a lot, but you know, I, I come from a background of um, uh, addiction and I'm, I'm thankful for the many years that I have um, in my road to recovery and in hearing your story, that's what I think of. And I just wanna highlight you and tell you, continue the amazing work that you're doing, continue to uplift our people through your story, through your messages, um, because those messages is what, you know, help people, you know, the cognitive thought is what help people to apply um, their actions every single day. So I just I just want to say thank you for all the amazing work that you're doing. And I right. think and I, oh go ahead. No go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I just wanted to say like with that's the whole point of the book is just the thought process of it. Um where where am I now? Where have I where have I been and of and when you talk about coming back into the fold, another huge part of my writings, because like I said, I never thought that the writings would become a book. It was just revelations that I was getting. But at that point, in those points, I was trying to figure out where do I relate in the Bible? And even though, you know, I came to Christ so long ago, I struggled with like, God, is, are these the words still for me? And in those times, he showed me where those words were for me. And it was in a practical way. And like you said, it's, it's someone else's story. So I pride myself on the transparency because whatever I'm going through, someone else is going through. And if what I went through can help somebody else come over to the other side without as many bumps and bruises as I had to get to get there, then I feel like my work is done. Right. Right. <laughs> right, right. That's amazing. Yeah, and I also just wanted to chime in and say thank you. Um, very powerful. And, um, you know, one thing about us, like I said in the intro, you know, we want to support our Black businesses. Uh, when people are doing amazing work in the community and they have products, we want to make sure that we are circulating our Black and Brown dollars to support and uplift. And definitely when you have uh, a testimony like that, it needs to be heard. And um, there is always people out there that are going through things. And sometimes that little bit of encouragement or, you know, for people to see somebody go through what they might be going through and could come out on the other side bigger and better is always important. And um, they had a saying, uh, one of the planters said the other day, it's something from healing from heart to heart. We're giving information heart to heart. Right. And when it comes from the heart, we feed the heart and um, we make impact. So um, I just wanted to get your story out there. I wanted to get your book out there. And I wanted to let people know to get behind you and support you. Um, because that's what we have to do in our community, you know, and it, it's multiple ways to heal. Them. And um, sometimes it's through books, sometimes it's through audio, sometimes it's through visual, and sometimes it's just going through the heart-to-heart -heart conversations with people. So um, I just wanted to 
you know, definitely say, keep doing what you're doing. Keep giving those encouraging words to the community because there are people out there that are listening and, and, and taking that information and, and moving on with their life with it. And it's just a testimony to be able to be a part of it and see. So thank you again. And um, definitely um, let everybody know your book name, um, how to get reach out to you, how to order the book, um, you know, all your social media. Please let people know so that they can reach out to you, support you. Okay, well, the book is called uh, Be Encouraged. If I made it over, so can you. Um, it's available on Amazon right now. And you can follow me on Facebook. It's Shantae Bluford. And I just started an Instagram page for my ministry page is Desperately Seeking Identity. And it's just a ministry surrounded about people finding their true identities through Christ. And again, it's desperately underscore seeking identity. Okay. And then if you could go ahead, because we are recording this, if you could put the information in the chat, just in case we get somebody in our group later or someone's asking for that information, we can make sure that we just give them the right information. Okay. Well, thank, thank you again. Um, your time is appreciated. You know, just wanted to highlight you as a hidden gem. Um, that's what this is all about, is letting people who might not see you, know about you, get an opportunity to interact on this platform. So thank you again. And please okay. stay on. If you can, please stay on. We definitely would love no, to see I, you on. I got to see what the other lovely ladies got to say. Like, <laughs> right, 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 right. Most definitely, most definitely, most definitely. But we're going to engage in a, in a, in a, in a deeper conversation um, at the end. Just, you know, we're going to throw a topic out there and then we, we all just kind of like converse about the topic um, at hand because everyone come from different walks of life and, you know, Black is... Um, it, it, it's so different in so many different ways because we all come from different levels of, 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 of our experience. And I like to hear different voices. And that's how I learn is through different people and different experiences and, and different lifestyles. So I like to hear as much as I possibly can. And that's how uh, I personally learn. So I, I, I can't wait to hear and get to that part. That's my favorite part, other than the highlights, of course. But um, <laughs> So I guess we're going to go right into our, our, our next person. I, I've been knowing this lady, like, for, I think, for, for some years now. She do some amazing work um, in our community. Uh, I'm just going to kind of read uh, uh, some of her bio. She didn't put everything in there that she does. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go a little, bit, a little bit into it. Her name is uh, Ayula Mitchell. Um, her program is Educate to Elevate was created by Ayula um, to educate people on the relationships between trauma and harm on both sides of prison walls. Um, educate to Elevate also focuses on the impact of language as a uh, con conduit and to separate harm um, or uh, facilitating healing. So I've been knowing Ayula for like a long time. She's the one who supported me when I was going inside the county jails uh it may I, like Ayula you do so much work and I and I know that you didn't put it all on there which is amazing because we I want to hear you you know talk about all the good stuff that you got going on I follow you on Facebook I see a beautiful family um that you have so um I do go ahead <laughs> I want to I would I have to say something about my sister too man you know? <laughs> I have to say something um you know because it's important um, these type of, uh, of highlights and, and nominations for things are very important because there are a lot of people that's doing a lot of great things that people don't know, they don't talk about. And I know people that do this work, we don't do it for acknowledgement. So I know sometimes pulling people to this type of platform for a lot of people is like, they don't want to do that, right? Because they, they like, I'm doing this out of love from the heart and we understand that. But we also have to highlight and let the world know, let the people know. There are powerful sisters out here that's doing amazing things for our people. And um, I've been knowing Ayula for a long time as well. We have done over 300 meetings at the San Francisco Juvenile Hall, mentoring, working with our youth, building them up. Um, and just out of that, meeting her beautiful family, her children, um, how all of the ups and downs and things that she's been through to overcome. I mean, if you look in the dictionary, and, and you look up perseverance, you look up continue fighting, her picture should be there because this sister, the stuff she been through, she could have quit so many times. She could have walked away and put and, and hung it all up. But, you know, to lose your, ch your child 
and still fight and care about other people, child, is very important. It's amazing. So we wanted to highlight you, all the work you're doing in the county jail, all the programs you put together, all the people you support that you don't get recognized. We wanted to make sure tonight that we highlight you, we recognize you. So with no further ado, I have to say, my sister, Ayula Mitchell, come on and let the people know who you are and what you're doing. You got to unmute your mic, unmute your mic. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Hi, Rico. Hi, John Henry, my beautiful sisters. Thank you for inviting me to be here tonight. Uh, John Henry, what you said is so accurate. I don't, I don't spend a lot of time talking about what I do. Uh, I'm just, I'm just doing it. I just believe that um, our community needs so much healing, and and so that's my focus: getting our people healed and getting our people free, figuratively and literally. I, um, I have five five beautiful children, uh, ranging in ages from 41 to 16. My baby started her senior year in high school. Uh, they in and of themselves are doing amazing work and it's a testament to really one first and foremost I'd be it would be remiss of me without saying Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and without putting him you know he is the reason really why I'm still standing he is the reason why I continue to do the work that I know he's called me to do and uh, we've been through a lot our family has been through a tremendous amount of trauma and tragedy and loss and yet we are still um, persevering, we're still standing. Um, one of the things that I'm so blessed to say is that myself and all of my children um, do work in service to others. Everyone, I have two children that are teachers, I have one that's a therapist. Um, and like I said, um, my, and one is a junior in college at UC Davis. Um, I don't know if playing basketball is in service to others, but I like to say he's my student academic athlete. He entered um, UC Davis with like a 3.7 or something like that. So they're, they're doing amazing. Um, the work that I do, I have my full time job is I oversee and develop programs for the San Francisco Sheriff's Office. I've been doing that almost five years now. It's important that I pour into the lives of the young people and the older people who are incarcerated. I it's important to me that they know that I see their humanity. Uh, before I began in my current position, I was a I worked in the jails as a contractor. So I've been around the jails since 2009. Uh, I love the work that I do. It's difficult though, working in the jail. And I tell people all the time, there's a difference between going into the jail to do work and working in the jail. So my office is in the jail every single day from 6 a.m. until three o'clock, I am in the jails. And that can be very difficult. It can be draining. There's a lot of uh, things that happen, whether it is someone um, being found guilty at trial, somebody sentenced to life or life without the possibility of parole, somebody's parents, um, parental rights being terminated. Um, I've had the um, responsibility of notifying men when their loved ones have been murdered um, in the community. So it's a lot. Uh, but I also know that this is the work that I'm supposed to be doing. So my, Sunday through Thursday, I work in the jails at San Bruno. And before the pandemic, on Fridays and Saturdays, and sometimes Sundays when I would get off from work, I would be at San Quentin, where I also do programs there. I work primarily um, with the, it's called the Youthful Offender Program, which is the 18 to 25 year olds. I facilitate a group with them. And I also work with the men who are getting ready to go to the parole board. There's a lot of work that goes into parole board preparation. And so I assist with that. Uh, I do a lot of volunteer work. I've had an opportunity to speak all over the country uh, about the trauma and tragedy that my family has been through with the message being that healing is available to everybody. And I'm able to do the work um, because of the healing work that I've done with myself. It is important that, and I hear you all talking about it often, healing is so important. As black people, we literally have trauma in our DNA. We were born 
into trauma. And then there's the trauma in our communities, there's the trauma in our families, and there's just the trauma of being black, right? And so it's important that we heal. And oftentimes, you know, I cringe when people talk about black on black crime and how come we're not marching against that. And I say all the time, Pookie and Ray Ray and them are not gonna stop killing each other because we had a march. It's about that deep personal connection with them, the work that you all are doing with the mentoring program, the work that you all are doing showing up for young men and women, the connections, the relationships, that's what helps people change their lives when they have so much trauma and harm that they've experienced. Um, so those are some of the things that I, that I do. I'm, like I said, my focus is healing. I have an opportunity at work to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with um, the guys that I work with. And oftentimes people aren't even able to understand the causative factors of why they have harmed other people, why they have become violent. And one of the things that I do in the work that I do with the young men um, is helping them to understand, not to make excuses for behavior, but to understand if you've been, ex if you've been exposed to violence the majority of your life, then why wouldn't you become violent? Now, obviously there's those exceptions, but those aren't the ones that we see. And just if I can just give a quick story and then I'll, I'll um, pass it on. Um, I worked with a brother at San Quentin who recently was paroled, but prior to his parole, he had spent 30 years on death row, 30 years on death row and his sentence was reversed, well, his sentence was vacated and then he got a life sentence, which is why he was able to um, get parole. But when I was working with him, getting ready, getting him ready for helping to get him ready for the board, part of his story was by the time he was 10 years old, he had witnessed three murders. So just think about that. By the time he was 10 years old, he had witnessed three murders. So we come from communities with unhealed um, pain, unprocessed trauma, unhealed harm. And so it's, it's almost inevitable that we either implode or explode, right? Because we don't, we don't do therapy. We're, 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 that's changing, that's definitely changing. But I'm, you know, growing up, we didn't do therapy. And, and one of my girlfriends says, black people don't do therapy, they do church. And don't get me wrong, it's important to have that spirituality, but the Bible also talks about faith without works is dead. And so there's sometimes that we need more. And the last thing I'll say is when my oldest son was shot 17 times, Nobody at the church told me just pray for him. No, he had to have surgeries. He had to be in the hospital. There's all these things that had to happen in addition to prayer. So when we have physical ailments, we'll go to a doctor. But when we have harm mentally and emotionally, we're less likely to seek help from that. But it's really the same thing. It's all part of our body. So that's some of the work that I do in our community. I want to thank you. Um, amazing work. Um, I know the, the change and the effect that you have on our young people and, and a lot of the men and the groups that we work. Um, just all I can say is thank you and you're a blessing. Keep doing what you're doing. And, um, you know, this is why we do this to help break some of the stigma. The more we talk about mental health, the more that we make it okay and, and it's okay to have the conversation. And that's what both sides of the conversation is about is opening up having a conversation. And when men see people like me and Rico talking about the struggles, talking about um, some of the traumas and things that we deal with, um, it helps people open up. So um, just, just wanted to say thank you again. I know what you're doing and I'm glad you're just here to share with the people. Um, please let people know um, how to get a hold of you if they want to reach out or put the information in the chat as well. Um, because we know there's a lot of people who watch and they want to get behind people, sponsor, help out our network. And um, definitely want to make sure that we connect you with those people. Okay, my social media is Ayula, A-Y-O-O-L-A. -O -O Sunshine is on Facebook, Ms. Ayula underscore 21 on Instagram, and Da, D-A, Preacher Girl on Twitter. And then my website is www.educate, the number two, elevate.net. And I also have a blog where I've, I've shared some of my story of what we've been through, and that's myhealingjourney.me. Okay, okay, there you go. And then if you could just put some of that stuff in the chat, we'll make sure if we miss anybody or later on when we replay it, we can make sure we get the information to them so they can link up to you. Uh, Rico, you got anything you wanna say final? 
I just want to continue to say amazing job. Amazing job. I can't wait to get back there and uh, run one of them groups. You know, this COVID-19, uh, it hit us all hard. And when you love doing the work and you love going inside and at least giving an uplifting message, um, you know, it's a void there. So I feel a void because um, I, I, I love going inside the jail and at least um, sharing my experience to uplift young people who might be going through or thinking the same thing I was thinking uh, when I was previously incarcerated. Thank you so much. And I can't wait for you all to um, come back in because believe me, there's no programs going on in the facility right now. So that means there's about 500 and something people who are like, Ayula, can I see Ayula? Ayula, tell Ayula, come talk to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. Rico, you want to go ahead and introduce our next guest? Definitely, definitely. So uh, this next person, uh, actually, um, I've been seeing her for a long time, but I didn't really know that she was that involved in the work um, until uh, when was this? Maybe like last year, um, I um, was, was kind of more educated on a lot of work that this person been doing out their own pocket, just kind of like doing the work just cause they from the community. Uh, this person has created the Heart Foundation um, the Heart Foundation is to educate our youth to help clean their community during COVID-19 pandemic, therefore by picking up trash um, on related properties, uh, wearing masks and gloves, handing out gloves and masks. Also, um, also heart to heart, um, from the heart strives to access health, food for all residents um, in their communities uh, by promoting food security, um, installing job secure uh, job skills, outreach, activism. Um, also, they provide youth summer employment, um, teaching san uh, sanitizing um, during COVID-19, uh, accommodating the needs of the elderly and dis uh, disabled via um, delivery, house calls, and checkups. That that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of work. Uh, providing the elders, disabled. Um, multi-family homes with healthy groceries, hot meals, donated PPE, and emergency supplies during the shelter in place. Uh, and this person is my Ika Pinkston. Hello, everyone. Hi, John. Hi, Rico. Hi, ladies. Hello. How you doing? Is your, camera not, is your camera not working or you need it to be off? No, I think I need it to be off. Y'all know I got okay. this janky zoom up here on this. <laughs> okay. 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 We, but, 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 but just, you got to turn it on for a minute so people could put a face, a, a voice with a face, okay. a face with a name. You know what I mean? There you go, my beautiful. All right. There I go. Y'all got me now. My beautiful <laughs> black sister. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, hello, you know what I mean? So they got to put a face with it. So, you know, when they out there in the community, they can say, oh, I know she can help me. I don't remember her name, but I remember that I remember that voice and I remember that face. You know, sometimes we don't remember names too well. So we might be like, oh, I remember her. She got that program up there that can support me and I can get the help. So um, we definitely want to highlight you and thank you for all the amazing stuff that you do. Um, the advocacy work that you do. Um, I know you have the program, the Heart Foundation, but also um, I wanted you to talk about the advocacy work and the um, activism work that you do in the community outside of the Heart Foundation and then kind of go into the Heart Foundation. So if you can talk about that work that you're doing, I know it's a lot. So just take <laughs> a deep breath and, uh, <laughs> and let it on out. Um, well, I'm going to just let you guys know, I'm period for unity, peace, love, respect, and healing. Um, and that's what I preach all day, every day, because without it, we have nothing. Um, and so with that being said, I am going from, as they say, hood to hood every day, talking to my young men, you know, coming through with PPE, you know, bringing them masks and hand sanitizer and, you know, just being in their business, being nosy, coming through, preaching, <laughs> teaching them about the senses, um, you know, just giving them love, just showing love. And I found out that that helps so much. That helps so much. 
sometimes it may put me in a little bit of trouble because as soon as they're in trouble, then guess who they come to? Um, and, you know, a lot of times it's like, why did you come to me? <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I want them to come to me so that I can provide them with some of the wiser um, advice as we had growing up um, to keep us out of trouble. And a lot of the times they don't have that. They don't have that um, that love, that support, that go-to person. So they go out there and they make the worst decisions. In fact, I just lost my godson two nights ago. Oh. And, you know, it's, it, you know, at, at what part of me, you know, is just hurt. The other part of me is like, boy, I told you, you know, and it, it just feels like that so much because I have saved so many of my boys' lives around here. You know, it. Uh, you, you could only imagine, you could only imagine. Um, and so with that being said, I've just learned that love is actually what they need. If we show them love and we show them that they have support, you know, we, we may not be able to save every last one of them. However, you're going to reach at least a good 15 out of 20. So they listening. Even if you don't think, you don't believe that they're listening, they are listening. And they know who love them and they know who don't. And they know who phony and they know who not, you know. So I can just say, I won't say I'm the mother of the community, not at all. Um, but I will say my kids come to auntie, you know, when, at all times, you know, and so that, that I feel like is a good thing because the children are our future. And I think a lot of us adults are forgetting that, that without them, they, they are our next presidents. So could you imagine what's going on now? And when they do become, um, of age, how would they benefit us as the president of the United States or the mayors or, you know, will any of our African-American uh, youth be even looked upon? You know, we have, we have some good children out there. Don't get me wrong. However, we have more that I see that, that are following in the wrong direction. When we grew up, we grew up watching Bill Cosby and everybody wanted to go to college and, you know, want to be a doctor, want to get married, want to have a family. And now these children are watching all this mess on the uh, internet and, you know, just wrong examples, wrong following. And so with that being said, I guess you can say I'm kind of old school and I, I, want, I, I don't condone it. It's like, no, we need to stay old school and we need to be teaching these children in those, for one, respect. If you don't respect yourself, you can never expect anyone else to respect you. And that's uh, another thing that I preach to you all day long. You have to respect yourself. Respect yourself so that others will respect you as well. Um, the other things that I do in the community, you know, is I try to not only keep the four properties that um, that I resign on, but throughout the rest of the community, I just, you know, kind of go around and check and, you know, take pictures so that 311 can come through and clean it up. Because my thing is, if you live in an unhealthy, unclean environment, that's a mental issue. That brings on mental a mental issue. You go outside, everything dirty. That affects your your mental capability. You know, a clean environment is a, a better environment to be able to concentrate in. And um, without you know, without that, it, it brings on miserable. You're miserable. You're miserable. You know. So it's just some things in the community that I feel that as us as a people, we should get up and do on our own. So if you go outside in front of your house, whether or not you like, I live in the projects, it don't matter where you live, you live somewhere, clean around your own facility, pick up your own garbage, put your own stuff away, ensure that your own neighborhood is clean. And then that way you don't have to be complaining about what the city and county isn't doing, it's about what you're not doing.
You know, we have to, we have, as people have to take on our own responsibilities. And I find that our, our culture, our African-American people, we feel entitled. And I don't want no one to take this wrong, but we're not, we don't nobody owe us anything. We owe ourselves. You know, we, we owe ourselves. So if we want better, we have to do better for ourselves. And it starts again with us being on the youth, you know, and ensuring that they understand, they understand what needs to be done in the community, teaching them as well, not teaching each other because we know what's going on. We've been here 40 plus years. They're the ones who need to be taught. And so that's that's what I do. So I've taken um, my youth to San Quentin prison tours, um, you know, just to get take them up there to show them not where they're gonna go, because that's not what we want. We want to show them where they don't want to go and what it's like. So this is why you don't want to be here. Um, and I found that that was a really good tour to take them on. I felt like that brought them closer to me because that's when they they were able to go there and see what actually took place and who was in there and it was like they were able to talk it was a very 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 good program it's called us i believe it's the scar the scars program and it's a very good program so it's not no scared straight program not at all it was more so of a educating them of where they didn't want to be programmed. And so I thought that was really good. So my hopes is my um, organization from the heart is that I will be able to put together more positive positions for them so that that way they can be in their community, they can work in their community, they can, you know, help keep their community together, see what it is to be in unity. Perhaps that will stop some of the violence. Like I said, I, I know I'm not God, I can't stop it all, but at least I could try. You know, if we can get a lot of them being able to get up and go to work together, we know they like money. So they get out there and make money. They do something positive in the community. Then that motivates them and then makes them feel, you know, better. It makes them feel a part of and as if they're doing something. And I can remember when um, I was growing up, John, Rico, all of us, we had after school jobs. We had summer jobs. We went on. Uh, camping trips with, you know, community centers. We did a lot of positive things and there's not a lot of positive structure right now for whatever the reason, somewhere the ball got dropped. So me being in the inner community, I'm just trying to bring that back to life up here so that we can keep our babies alive because if we don't have anything um, in play to help them we're gonna lose more and more of them, and which that's I true. believe is the plan to begin with. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, I, I I definitely commend you on that. I mean, bridging that gap between our young people, um, I have I have realized and seen the work that you're doing, and how much respect our young people have. And I think, you know, the amazing work that you're doing is just being able to bring the youth to the old. I see all of the feeding that you're doing for our elders in the community. Um, also, what tends to happen in our communities is the elders get left out, and I, I've seen you made that a vocal point to make sure that our elders are eating, um, and just doing all the stuff with the census and organizing, boots on the ground, um, getting involved when different community things are happening, and that's what we need. And um, just leading, leading, following your, following your lead for the things that you're doing, and um, just amazing. And uh, we just want to say thank you. We had to highlight you because we see you. We out there and we want people to know, like, this is the work you're doing, how you're impacting the community. Um, you know, we grew up together and it's like, man, it's just, it's good to see our people doing the right thing, helping keep the community clean, helping to keep our young people inspired and driving. And I think the solutions are right within you. So I just want to say, keep doing the work that you're doing. People are watching, people see the things you're doing. And, um, you know, we just want people to get behind you and continue to support you. Um, definitely, if you want, just go ahead and put up um, all your social media information in the chats and let people know how to get behind you and support. I know sometimes you get a lot of meals, 
And we want some of the people in the community to come out and support you and help deliver those meals and get them to the right people's hands. So if you could just give people that information, how to help you, and then put it in chat as well. You definitely, All right, I'm doing that now. Thank you, you guys so much. Doing amazing work. You're definitely doing some amazing, amazing, amazing work. And I know that it's super hard to talk talk about ourselves and, and to highlight ourselves. I know that for for what I've noticed for Black people, it's very hard for us, especially when we're sincere about the work. Like It's very hard to talk about the stuff that we do. And it's so hard for us. We, we forget about the other thousand things that we got going on. So I definitely want to commend you, uh, Maika, for your advocacy with um, with Young Blood Coleman, your advocacy around the health in the community, your advocacy with the um, working with the mothers who have lost their children to uh, violence. All this stuff that I see you at and you support individuals around. Um, I know you didn't get the op or, or that you didn't mention it, but I definitely wanted to mention it because you do a lot of amazing work and you support everybody. Keep up the amazing work, sister. I love you. We love you here at both sides of the conversation. This is definitely. Uh, a home for you. Yeah, and my condolences to your uh, your, your family, man. I, I know you reached out to us, and um, just just my prayers is out for the family. Keep pushing, don't give up, and uh, we're here for you. Whatever you need us for. So now, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh -oh. we got the queen. We got the queen V. You know what I'm saying? Not B, but V. You know, she's been doing this work for a very long time. Um, and, and actually, we're close in age. I didn't even realize that. But I do want to let her know that, you know, we had to highlight her. We had to bring her on. Um, she put me on to so much stuff, uh, especially as it relates to the work. Um, she, first time I think I had a, a real, real, real conversation with her was around Friends of Many Parks, uh, Friends of Parks. Um, and she was telling me the work that she was doing around Young Blood Coleman. And then uh, we end up uh, doing something over there in Filmo because of her recommendation. Um, and she has a lot going on, like her resume in terms of the work is, is, is so, so, so big. Um, I don't want to like read the, cause my phone is so, so small, it's hard to read all that stuff. So I definitely just want to bring Van Queen Vanessa on and have her talk about a lot of the good stuff she got going on. Um, I want to let you know I love you. Thank you for all the work that you do in our community. Thank you for your community voice. Um, you. I think you're, you're you're unique because you do represent different layers of our community um, because you uh, you come from the different layers of our community and and through your development you have been able to touch so many lives and touch so many different people in all walks of life. Um, continue the amazing work which I know you're gonna do. I know you're gonna um continue to have your voice i love your voice because your voice is real um you don't um compromise or you don't um oh let me try to do it this way or say it that way you say it the perfect way to where people get an understanding um and that, and i like that about you because you're very assertive um continue with that with that with that way continue to lift up our young women um hopefully they, they can see the model in you and, and representing real revolution um, as it relates to our young women. Um, and, 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 and hopefully, you know, I wanted to say this to the women who are out there watching, there's a lot of amazing women doing a lot of amazing work in there. They come in so many different like messages, like, 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 like it's it just so many different messages, so many different types, like cling to a woman, that can that like that's your type and 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 get the get the mentorship that you need, get the guidance that you need. Let's stop the cat fights all because right. we all can support each other and we can all heal from each other. I, I personally I like dealing with women because I'm a mama's boy. I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna tell the truth. I'm a mama's boy. I was born on my mama's birthday, so you know I know the power of a woman. So I like mentorship from women they're a little bit more nurturing so i like that approach me personally um but thank you for always giving that to our young women and hopefully that we can continue to refer young people to you who are trying to be a part of the movement um i love the work that you are doing with uh wealth and disparities in the black community the work that you got got going on with your book 
So let me just bring you, John, if you ain't got nothing, can I just bring her on up? Because it's a lot and, and, and I want her to get, you know, bring it all out. Do you have some? Now, you know, I have to say something. You know, we got to say You know, I have to say one thing. You know, I've been, I've been knowing her for a long time, you know, and in transitional, as we go through our transition in life, you know, we evolve and things happen. So I had to bring her back to history, remind her who I was and what was going on. And she said, oh, but that's how it worked. But I had to also say that we had to bring her on because one, she's a freedom fighter. She's boots on the ground. You know what I mean? She's going to speak up for the community. She's going to keep it real at all times, at all costs. And um, that's what we need more of in our community. There's too many people behind the scenes, you know, playing the role, doing the, doing the acting and, and, and all of that to make things good. You always stay true. And um, I just want to thank you. I'm going to let you go on and introduce all stuff. But I just want to say thank you, Vanessa, Queen Vanessa. Thank you. Because um, you are a queen. All of you queens on here are doing amazing things. And as men, we love to highlight our sisters because it's so many times that it goes by that our women, our African-American brown women say that they don't get appreciated by the males for the things that they do. And um, I'm just glad that me and Rico have this pl platform and the opportunity to uplift you guys, support you guys, and let you know that us brothers out here do support the things you guys are doing and we're gonna back you 100%. So without further ado, Queen Vanessa, come on and let the world know what you're doing. Queen V! <laughs> Thank you, you guys. I love you guys. Thank you for this platform. Thank you to all the sisters on here that's doing the wonderful work that you are doing. You know, we, 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 this, this is just, you know, this is what we supposed to be doing. You know, we shouldn't feel bad about nothing we doing, none of us, even though at times it's, it's hard, it's traumatizing because I am a born native of San Francisco Bayview on Hunters Point. And if you know anything about Hunters Point, you know the trauma and the pain that we didn't been through out there. So I think I'm able to do this work because my mom did it. My mom was a part of the community. My mom, you know, in the 60s and, and, and she, my mother was a part of the big five, but see, people don't understand the big five was big. It was just bigger than them, them boots on the ground. So we just know about the ones, we just know about the voices because they was the ones that's trying to make sure black folks had a place in San Francisco, like Miss Westbrook and Miss Garlington and, Ms. and Dr. Espinola Jackson. But she also had like my mother, like Miss Banks and Charlie C. Mother, Miss Chalmer and Miss Rudolph and Jordan Washington. You know, those those were the ones that took care of us, the children. You know, we the um, black folks were real organized when I was a kid coming out here, coming up in Hunters Point. So. It, 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 it is just like, it's just what I have to do. You know, I just don't feel like it's nothing else really for me to be doing, you know, this is our struggle. So being that um, I didn't have to say that, I didn't been through a lot, you know, myself. And, and if it wasn't for God, I really wouldn't be who I am. And if it wasn't for God, um, you know, tapping me on my head sometimes, you know, like, no, you know, you gotta do this. Um, I don't know where I would be. I, um, I'll tell my kids all the time, sometimes, I don't know, I could have been dead a couple of times in this city. I could be in prison for a long time for some of the stuff I did, but God just always showed me favor. So I just have always been blessed because I was just a product of my environment. You know, I really wasn't trying to be a part of half of the stuff you get caught up in, but that's what urban life is. And that's why, um, I'm, I'm a product of the environment. And so with all that being said, um, I'm a founder of, um, I'm a, first of all, I'm a, I'm a victim of the war on drugs. I have been wounded by the United States war on drugs. So now that they have initiated the cannabis movement, San Francisco have programs in other counties Y'all look into this because everybody, every county should start looking into the equity for as cannabis. I don't care if you're in Santa Rosa, Sacramento have a program going, Oakland got theirs going. We got to get our people connected into the equity from the cannabis because it's, it's due to us as African-Americans and brown people in America. 
And so I'm here in San Francisco and for the last two years, I have been working on an organization called Born and Raised Survivors and Community Developers, where I'm gonna come back in like FEMA and Red Cross and help my people that have been wounded by everything that's been happening. So my platform is education. So I have a lot of things coming out in 2021. I will actually be coming out 20, in 2021 launching the program. I will be revealing it's a book called um, Hunter's Point, The Black Ghetto. It's by this man named Arthur Hitler. He, um, he, wrote it, he wrote it in 1974. Everything he said in the book, I declare as a native of San Francisco, California, that is still the same. Nothing has changed 47 years later. And it's bothering me that the book even fell on my lap. So I'm going to reveal his theory to San Francisco in June 20, um, in May of 2021, hopefully if God say the same, then I'm gonna come out with my organization. But in the meantime, that's just how I wanna roll out the organization. I am now officially an author. I have wrote a book called titled, Did They Kill Our Most Prominent Asian Leaders of San Francisco? Subtitled, Black Genocide Via Hip Hop, The War on Drugs. So what I'm doing is, I ain't gonna lie, I got a little discouraged when Jeff Kadachi got killed out here in the city. I was a little mind bothered. So I just set up and just started writing a book. And um, I'm just, you know, because one thing as African-Americans, we got to understand in America, their conspiracy theories is our reality. So at some point, like, you know, a lot of things that's happening to us, like not educating us in the school system, all this stuff is a design, it's a plan. They they have a manual out. And this this just breaks your heart when you know this is what they want to do to us. Like they got a manual out that's called the cradle to the pipeline of prison that they implemented in 1974. Like, why would y'all not want to educate us? So when you find out the tactics. Um, that they have in place for us is just time for me to just, you know, do what I can to try to educate the urban community because like I keep telling um, Director Davis and Cheryl Davis, my mentors um, and who leadership I'm under up here, out here in San Francisco, is that this is like our now or never you know, like I'm 50, you know, Rico, you're a little younger than me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 50, I just made 50 this year. So, you know, I don't have a lot of time to keep trying to, you know, be the voice. Like it's, it's gonna take all of us to be the voice. It's gonna take all of us to just, to just stop what we doing and look to say, hey, you know, things is not going right for us and really nobody's going to come in and help us. You know, I've been doing this work. My son is 32. So I've been doing this work before even my son was born. So I didn't realize nobody's coming in to help us. And there's so many people with good ideas that can come in and help. But like Rico said, he made a good point. We got to stop the cat fighting, you know, amongst ourselves as African Americans, just all over America with the, with the, with the killings and the pandemic. And, you know, just, you know, the young man that Mika was talking about, I've been on that little kid ever since he was six years old, you know, this stuff is, is, is killing us that our kids are out here just aiming for for death and and I just say to myself sometimes like wow you know how many times have I would have been dead or how many times would I would have killed somebody just for just simple misunderstanding or not liking each other so we all talking about accountability here in San Francisco we talking about defunding the police and making them accountable but I'm gonna just keep it 100 because if this is the platform I need and the space I need, we have to be accountable for our own selves. Like urban community from San Francisco to the town, to Sacramento, to Baton Rouge, to wherever we at, we got to do better. We are under a serious attack. Like, you know what I'm saying? So let me share this with you. Al Sharpman got a book called A Rejected Stone, and he was talking about Michael Jackson is what made me interested in the book. But when I 
went to the book library and got the book because I didn't really want to pay the $26 for the book. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, if I could have got it out the library, that's what I did. He said this in his book, and I'm and I'm going and I'm going verbatim him because it spooked me because I wasn't born in 1950. And this is what he said. He said, a black folks don't get they stuff together while Obama is in place. The next president that come in office is going to look at a black folks as though it's 1950 and our children, listen to me, and our children is not going to have the rights that we have today. So that's why we in this pandemic. You know, robots is coming on us in America by 2030. So a lot of us actually is going to be out of work. So America is only behind in 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 um in in trying to get the robots rolled out. So if y'all know anything about the universal basic income, you start hearing the universal basic income, you know, and mayors are rolling out the basic universal income, whether it's Mayor London Breed or whether whether it's the brother up in um Oakland, I mean Modesto or the mayor out in Sacramento, the universal basic income was established in Thomas Paine time. And that was in the 1700s. So I'm, I'm, I need to say that my movement is about to be to go hold us accountable. I can't keep getting mad at what white folks is doing when I know us as a people need to be doing better too for ourselves and our children. Like our children need us in America. We, they shouldn't keep getting taught by um, um, by, by white educators, you know, not that I got anything against white people, don't get me wrong. I just feel like white people don't want to educate us. And I don't know why I didn't get educated when I was a young girl growing up in San Francisco, growing up out here in San Francisco. And that's what a lot of my movement is going to break down how education did me in the seventies. Cause I was four when the young man wrote the book. And so it's just, we got to understand the tactics and i think if we understand the tactics because everything you know like john Henry said i don't know when he said it but i think it was yesterday i think in one of y'all, y'all black y'all black panthers thing everything is not money something like dick dick gregory said if you follow dick gregory on youtube dick gregory will tell you white folks want us to think it's money we need but we do need money but it's also information that we need and if we don't have the proper information like simply knowing that it's a cannabis movement out here and everybody that's been impacted by the war on drugs should be able to benefit even if it's just you know um a fifty thousand dollar grant for them to go back to school or you know for them to do something for themselves so you know i'm 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 definitely yeah you know i'm here trying to be that voice i'm not trying because you know i get told to quit saying trying i'm about to be that voice for the movement you know um this aftermath of the war on drugs the latinos let me tell you about the latinos they in the movement they in this movement and it's a lot of black folks is in the in the cannabis movement too but they not looking out for everybody you know we always hear Black folks, you know, get in and then they get to forgetting, you know what I'm saying, to come back and say, hey, come on, you know, come on, let's do this. So I'm going to make sure that don't happen. Um, however way I got to do it to make sure we all get what we deserve out here. And then on the flip side of that, I'm going to just keep organizing. I am trying to acknowledge us for Black history. Um, um, I'm bringing to San Francisco Black San Francisco unsung heroes, heroes, heroes and sheroes. We see you like Rico keeps saying, like this platform didn't develop. It's nothing but black media. We ain't doing nothing nobody else not doing. It's black media. We need this, that we need to start highlighting each other and giving each other our props and stuff and letting people know we see y'all out there just because ain't nobody coming to tell you, hey, you know, you're doing a good job. Thank you for what you out there doing, you know, because nobody never come tell me, but I don't need the the man i don't need people to tell me i'm I'm trying to do what i gotta do so when i get to jesus he can tell me job well done so you know that's right that's right 
saying? I know what I'm aiming for. You know what I'm saying? I don't need nobody a validation. And like Rico said, you know, I very well ask for permission, but I am very respectful though. And I love all my people. Cause if you ask me, I ain't gonna tell you what kind of life I'll be trying to live, but you know, God want me to do this. So I gotta be respectable and obedient to God and make sure I'm out here trying to help my people. And I'm so honored to be in a movement with each and every one of y'all on the platform. John Henry and Rico, man, y'all and y'all, man, y'all, I see us, man. I see us in the future with this whole movement. It's gonna grow bigger and better. And thank y'all so much for having me. No problem. Thank you very much. And, um, you know, through through this change, you know, we need people and uh, you definitely boots on the ground. Um, everybody have their own way that we're trying to get to this this, this goal. And um, it all starts with radical unity, unifying the community. And that's what we're about. And uh, we just appreciate you. Keep doing the work you're doing. And um, like you said before, we know a lot of people don't like to be highlighted, but we have to use this platform to uplift, promote, and um, unify our people through communication. And we just thank you for being available. Continue to do, keep doing the great work you're doing. Um, you know, you have a story that needs to be told and it needs to be heard. And, um, you know, we need more people to see what's going on in San Francisco and across this world for our black folks and our, and our, and our advocates and our organizers. And uh, just keep doing the work you're doing, you know, and we can't worry about everybody else. We just got to keep doing what we're doing. So yeah. thank you again. And we appreciate you. Uh, Rico, you got anything else you want to say? Yeah, I just want to say keep up the good work. You know what I mean? It works if you work it, so work it every day because we all worth it. You know, that's like my favorite thing right there. Like, keep doing the good work, man. Like, we're led by the spirit. And, and most Black people, we have a um, our spirits are definitely in tune with something greater than us when we listen to the spirit. Right. When right. we're led by the spirit. Um, so, you know, I just want to say continue to do the work and continue to to listen to your heart and to the spirit and everything going to always be okay. Even when we don't think it's okay, we're right. still being carried by something greater than us to excel right. and to continue to fight. So keep up the good work, sister. I love you, Queen V. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What you looking for? You need your glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> she trying to put her information in chat. Okay, uh, okay, we, de okay. we definitely go get your information out there if anybody have any questions. Okay, so I, I, I just wanted to kind of like pose a, uh, I guess a final question. Um, um, well, there is a question that's in the, in the Q and A that I think I possibly should ask. Um, uh, so okay, yeah. So I'll ask this question, then we'll have a final question after that. So um, Sabrina Hall asked. Where do you see your movement in two years? So if each person can just kind of give a short answer to where do you see your personal movement in two years? Uh, maybe we can start with you, Ayula. You gotta unmute your mic. I did. Where do I see, <laughs> where do I see my movement in two years? One of the goals, one of the major um, goals that I have is, like I said, I believe healing is needed for everyone. And whereas I've been able to do it, uh, do the healing work behind the walls, I really want to do it on a greater level. I even want to expand to do healing work with law enforcement, with work with first responders. When you think about the amount of um, second vicarious and secondary trauma that they see and how that then shows up and how they interact with um, victims' families, uh, the you know the experience that our family had when we when we experienced the trauma and the loss was horrific, and it's because um, everybody first responders aren't re aren't required to do their healing work, and even people in the community don't do their healing work. And I say this all the time: the men and women behind the walls do their healing work because they have to in order to be able to um, successfully get a parole date but when we're out here oftentimes you know we got the cars and the titles and the salaries and the homes and the kids and all the stuff um but oftentimes we we haven't done any healing work and it manifests in other ways so i just want to be able to continue to do this healing work on a greater scale uh including with law enforcement and first responders Dante. Um, for me, I, in the next two years, 
the same with, with Miss Iola said is it is about healing and my journey is for us for people to look inside themselves for that healing to do the work to so I see myself of course writing more books of speaking to girls and women uh, just about changes that can be made within self that doesn't have to do with anything else because we can't change the past, we can't change what happened to us, but we can change how we deal with it and what we do moving forward. And just doing more life coaching and groups to get that word out. Um, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, someone asked, but, but I'm hoping that whatever I do, I can do it just across the board. Right now in this pandemic, I've been, we've been having to utilize so much social media and doing things like this, <laughs> Zoom and, and lives and everything. And we're able to impact so many different lives on a different level. I was used to meeting up with people every, every week and having meetings. So now I'm having meetings with people through videos and phone calls. So I just want to keep on moving forward with that. I want to continue to heal and grow within myself. And I want to continue to see other people heal and grow and just having better relationships with one another. Queen Vanessa. Oh, where I see myself in two years. Oh, um, I really see myself in two years. Um, trying to really, really work with the urban community here in San Francisco. And, and you know, if, if, if God needs me to travel other places and, cause I'm really trying to, trying to just to, um, develop an urban blueprint, you know? Um, so everything we do, Rico, everything we all doing, you know, we grassroots. So we need to compile our information. And, and I'm really, I'm really um, trying to establish the uh, reform accountability for us because there's no use to doing this and not making sure we doing our part on the ground to make sure what we want to be right, go right for us. So I'm gonna spend uh, the next two years really, really, really working on the movement because I'm not coming out to next year. So I'll be really working on the movement, um, sharing my book, because um, I know people won't want to know why I wrote it, how I came up with all this, you know, because it, it's the book is real deep, you know, it it, it, it it talks about Jim Jones, you know, it just, it just, it, it, I just needed a way to vent, but I also use it in a way to educate people. And then like Shantae, I'm writing other books and stuff too. So I really enjoy writing and I didn't found a way that it's not gonna take me three years to write the book and get the book published. So I think I need to stick with um, that discipline and trying to help that way um, with literature and really just push a movement for my young people to um, start really reading. Like I really want young people to really, really read. So my movement that I'm gonna come out with in 2021 is, is called, um, basically one of my themes is um, college ready by fifth grade. Like we don't, I shouldn't have had to wait till I got to college to learn how to public speak. I should already know how to do that, which I, I, I was exposed to that type of environment. But when they took all that stuff out of the schools, it took away from the children. So having that, you know, esteem because that go along with building your esteem up too, you know, um, public speaking, dancing in front of people and performance. And so I, I just really want to make sure our kids get what what they deserve and that's what I'm gonna do for the next two years go hard for the youth and look out for my seniors like my mom asked me before she died so one, yeah so one of the common threads and the common themes that I heard was um continuing the work and healing right so you know I I, I think that in this moment that we're in where um, this society is based more on patriotic principles. Um, we notice this patriotic system and how they are towards the matriarch of the Black family and how they treat Black women um, from Sandra Bland to uh, Breonna Taylor 
and the list go on and on and on and on. And I personally pray every day that it doesn't happen again. But for some reason, I just feel <laughs> that it's going to happen again. Um, and in knowing that, is there anything that, you know, just that anybody just want to say around um, supporting our women? Um, I think that, you know, this society teaches us that it's a man's world. Um, I was taught a little differently. I was taught the opposite. <laughs> I was taught the opposite. So, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't believe in that. I think that, you know, it's definitely a woman's world and, you know, she, she, she approves it to be a man world. Right. So she put the stamp on it for him. Like, okay, it's cool. I'll let you take that. You can have that. But in this moment with, with what is going on to our women and how, how these movements around our women, they're not as highlighted as some of the men movements. What do you ladies think are some ways that we can help support some of these movements and making sure that if, if anybody that's in the black community is harmed, that we get, we just 100% fight no matter what. And it shouldn't have to be rather a male or female. Um, is there any um, ideas or just thoughts around, uh, or, or, or just what is your thoughts around just the, all that um, as it relates to women um, in the climate that we're in right now? Can I say it? It's a good question. I believe that it really belongs, begins with us I think like Vanessa said like we have to as a black community like our black men they have to I feel like they have to stand up more and and voice their respect for us and their protection over us because even before this all was highlighted I remember writing it about who is covering the black woman, who is protecting the black woman. Cause even now, even with everything that's going on, I can go through my social media feed and see men still speaking derogatory and saying things. And it's just, if we don't support each other and show that we love and respect each other, then I just don't feel like anyone else is, is going to do it. And until that kind of happens where what we do is important, because I do feel like as Black women, we are very supportive of, of our men, no matter what. And I just don't feel like we get the same. I just feel like we just need that same uplifting. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll talk. I one, I'd like to say that to me is complicated and this, that question could be a whole show or a series of conversations in and of itself. I, I, I believe everything goes back to healing. If, if, um, if we're healthy, then we show up healthy in our own lives and in the lives of other people. If we're healthy and then we understand um, that we unite it is what makes us stronger. If we're healthy, then we can support other people the way that we, we should. Um, I was at, there was a question posed the other day on social media about uh, the question was, do black women feel protected by black men? And I, for me personally, um, I have my sons and then I have my acquired sons um, that I know will scorch the earth behind me and, and the women in our family. And I have a whole community of men who will show up for me. Um, and I hate to believe that that's a, an anomaly, right? Um, I don't know if John, rem if John Henry remembers this, but it was one, um, my daughter was coming back from Spain and I was out of town and somehow my parents got the information wrong about picking her up and she was at the airport. And I called him and I was like, yo, Cece's at the airport, I'm in another state, can you go get her? He asked no questions except what airlines. And he went from San Francisco, I mean, went there, picked her up, dropped her off at home. Um, and I use that as an example. Those are the kind of men that I rock with, right? The other part is, 
I don't um, accept that it's the breakdown of the black family. I think that that's a crucial part of it. But I also knew that my boys in particular needed to be around, surrounded by men who I wasn't in relationship with. And so for their whole lives, they had strong, positive men pouring into them. And though I was a single mother their whole lives, they still had men that, like I said, pour into them. So it's a very complicated um, issue. I think that um, we can all do better. I do think that in a lot of ways, um, black women support black men in a way that's different than black men supporting black women. But I also hear black women tearing black men down. And so I'm the first to say, I love black men. I will scorch the earth behind y'all too, but I love black people. And, but because I love myself, right? And so it starts with healing of self. It starts with love of self. And then I'm able to love others, even those who don't love themselves. You know, so oftentimes, and I think the sister mentioned it earlier, pouring into people, meeting them where they are and loving them no matter what. I work with some, some guys that sometimes, woo child, but I keep showing up for them. I, you know, I don't give up on them. And that's, what, that's what's needed for us as a people and as a community. Um, I just think, because, you know, my perspective is, I just really hope that Black women all across America just stop for a moment and realize that these are our children out here. And sometimes we just might have to sacrifice for them to make life better for them. If that's not socializing with certain people or having certain people around them that can influence them to want to be like the people that they're having around them. So I, I got to keep saying that at some point, being the age that I am, I think urban communities has to do better. Like we, we the ones coming in, killing our, fighting with each other, shooting at each other, killing each other. Like it's, it's not like another race is coming into our communities and doing that. So as a mother, and, and, and I went all out for my son to make sure he didn't get killed or he didn't kill nobody. So at, at some point, I got to take it back to women like these are our sons that going to grow up to be men. And so we got to do better by them and loving on them. And like, 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 um, like the sister said, you know, they just need love. Like, you know what I'm saying? They already wounded. Like, a, it's a book called Kill Them Before They Grow. Now, who would even want to write something like that? So they already got a point. Like, put it like this. Me, everybody on this call, everybody that's in America today, we're no different than, than Jesus. We're no different than our ancestors. We just wear different clothes. The mechanism and everything, the attack on Black people is still, still going to be the same from the powers that be. So I just feel like as women, this is our time to get them boots on the ground, keep them boots on the ground, do whatever we can to try to keep uplifting each other because we, you know, Black lives just don't matter. We are so essential to this world. That's what we got to understand. The world don't move without us. When is we gonna? When is we gonna wake up and be like, you know what? We the reason why everything go round. You know what I'm saying? All the hate is against us. All the crimes is against us. All the police shooting is against us. What's gonna make everybody be like, damn? You know, I'm that important. I'm that important that y'all wake up to want to hurt me, and that's how we gonna heal and get better and get get to where we need to be. We got to get ready to start protecting our kids more and more so giving, 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 it, giving our babies to God and 
and and and you know going back to what we used to do praying and everything it's, and and we know what we're supposed to be out here doing we know who we come from it shouldn't take society and what they're doing for us to realize who we are we know who we come from we know what we're supposed to be out here doing we don't need their permission once i didn't found out that i was in the bible because in the bible it tells us we ain't even supposed to be working for nobody if we ain't getting up going to work and helping our own people then we look good pushing somebody else's agenda so once i realized that you know I, I i'm like you know well you know i gotta stay trying to help the community because that's where my heart is at and that's what i need to be doing so i just feel like women I, 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 from the bottom of my heart, I, I pray that we can do this. Like we can do this. Just keep chunk you sisters and sisters on the call. Y'all already doing it. It's just a matter of just that light bulb just kicking in and the rest of the sisters, which I pray that it will, that they see the light. And then we be the movement that our ancestors need us to be. Because if we don't, Y'all ain't gonna see Jesus because he's gonna be steady giving me the business on why I wasn't out here doing more and I can't do it all by myself. And then I, my ancestors ain't gonna be looking at me, turn up their nose, like who you thought you was that you couldn't be out there. See, I ain't going through that. So we gotta understand that this is just temporary. It's bigger than this. Until we get that, I think we're gonna be all right. And I love y'all. <laughs> right on, right on, right on. So it's late, and uh, Sister Shantae is in the in the Midwest, Ohio. It's late. Yes. We're gonna <laughs> go ahead and get ready to turn this down. But what I heard is we need love, we need unity, and we need support. We need our black men to support our black women. We need our black women to support our black men. The only way we can lead the community is if we feed the community with information, with knowledge and love. We have to have compassion for each other. We have to be able to forgive. We all will get in times where things are not right. We will get on shaky ground, but we have to have faith and we can't be afraid of the unknown to move forward. So as black and brown people, the struggle is real. We must continue to support each other. We must continue to love each other. And all this can happen if we all just take a step back and do the things that we need to do. Here at both sides of the conversation, two years from now, we would love to see enough capacity that we can continue to involve the youth, involve the seniors, have these difficult conversations in our communities, create that process of healing, we know there's a lot of stigmas. We know there's a lot of conversations that don't happen in our family that we need to have. And I think this platform will provide that. We need people to get involved. We need people to support and continue to promote each other. The biggest, biggest thing that's needed is self-esteem. The one most important thing that our young people are failing from is not having that self-esteem and having a fragile ego. So as men, we have to build up the young man's ego so that they know that they are kings, they are worth more than being locked up in a jail. So with that, I'm gonna just say thank you, ladies. Thank you, queens. We support y'all. We're gonna get more of our brothers. Me and Rico are working due diligently to unite black men in our communities. We are hoping that we inspire and innovate other brothers across the country to come together, lift each other up as Black Man United and come together and make change and impact our communities, through our families, through our women, and through all the information that's needed to be better off. So with that said, I'll pass to Rico. Thank you, ladies. Have a good evening. Thank you. I'm going to be very, very quick. I just want to thank you for being on. We support you. We got your back. I would love to have you ladies come back on and, and we can turn a series into that conversation. That'll be definitely really, really, really deep. Um, you know, just in educating our community. Um, also, um, continue the amazing work. Continue the amazing work. Whatever we can do to support you, we here. We got y'all backs. Um, I definitely want to figure out a way on how can we do some type of giveaway with your book, Shante, and figure out like how can we support some folks out there. Um, I don't know what, what you're thinking, John, but we can get a couple of books and do a- Yeah, I, I want to buy, we're going to buy, we will, we'll reach out to, we'll buy maybe, a, let's let's get a dozen books or something from her and we'll we'll give them out to some people in the community um, yeah. just to show support. So we'll reach out to you and um, definitely we'll make a purchase and um, grab some books um, because we understand that our black dollars are important, but we got to circulate them through each other to help uplift each other. Um, with all this COVID going on and everything that's going on, um, black people are being despaired with job unemployment, 
and we have to empower our black and brown community so that we can hire each other, so we can lift each other up and continue to build business to keep people going. So we're going to support you. We'll be reaching out. We'll figure out uh, a date and time. But yeah, we'll we'll, we'll grab some books from you and um, we'll make sure we pass them out to the people out here and um, we'll, we'll do something fun. But definitely, um, like Rico said, we'll be reaching out to you guys. Let's have this conversation. Um, we have this political era going on right now that we need to get to, but I think after this is over, this conversation is needed, and we definitely would love to invite you guys back to have that conversation with us. So out there in Facebook land and all our other platforms that we're on, if you know somebody who's a hidden gym in your community or who's a gym in your community, who's a VVS in your community, who even shine in the dark no matter what, right? Please hit us up at both sides of the conversation at gmail.com. Someone will get back to you. Please um, um, submit your nomination and we'll get back to that individual and make sure that we can uh, have them on one of our shows so that way we can highlight them and support them. Also, Black businesses, we love to support Black businesses. So if you know a Black business out there that's, um, that's, that's out there, it don't even matter what type of business, we want to be out there supporting our Black businesses and making sure that our people are spending dollars with Black individuals, Black institutions. So that's both sides of the conversation at gmail.com. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you Sunday. Next Tuesday. Sunday, Tuesday. Sunday, but next Tuesday for it. Bye. Bye.